Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to, to thank the UNCTAD and, uh, and the Energy Pack for this kind invitation. And uh, I, was, uh, I was supposed to, to, uh, to tell you uh, how Brazil contributes to uh, the solutions and problems of the green economy. Uh, every time we talk about Brazil and green economy, the first reaction of everybody say, well, but Brazil is a special case. Uh, we cannot can look at it as a special case. And in a certain sense, it's true that Brazil is a special case. Uh, we have a self-deprecating joke in Brazil uh, when we say that when, when God created the world, he created the states, and in each state he put one or two commodities. And at the end, the angel came and said, but God, that's not fair. Brazil, you forgot Brazil. So, oh yeah, what I'm going to do? So we pick in every country some part of, of its resources and we put in Brazil. And God said, but come on. Uh, the angel said, come on, that's not fair. Brazil will have everything and the others will have only some things. Uh, and God said, don't worry. You're going to see the kind of people are going to put there. <laughs> so uh, it's true that resources is not everything. It's the people who make uh, things happen. Uh, and it's true that in Brazil's history, we have a huge history, a huge story uh, of Dutch disease and mismanagement of uh, resources, from sugar to coffee to rubber to gold, etc. But in the last 50 years, I think the Brazilians have made a huge effort uh, to make God wrong. Mm? And uh, uh, I think that's important to, to, to have a first look at it. First of all, Brazil today uh, has the cleanest uh, energy matrix of all the big uh, economies, traditional or emerging. Right now, 47% of uh, Brazil's energy consumption comes from renewable sources while in the world it's about 33%. So Brazil is far, far in advance in terms of uh, using uh, renewable sources of energy. What's the secret of this performance? I think there's two main, uh, main uh, important uh, resources. One is hydropower, the other is biofuels. Let's not forget that Brazil has about 20% of the world's potable water. That's enormous. It's huge in a world where we're going to have problems with water. Uh, that means uh, that we have a huge potential for hydroelectricity, but also a huge potential for agriculture, which is linked. When we talk about energy, we should never forget agriculture uh, in, the, in that sense. To produce food, you need a lot of energy. So Brazil is a very, very uh, competitive food producer. It's becoming the granaries of the world in terms of uh, agricultural commodities. And probably in the next 10 to 15 years, 10 to 20 years, Brazil will have a huge weight in determining the quantities and price of food commodities in the world, soya, beef, etc. It's extremely important. At the same time, we have this huge hydroelectric uh, potential. 80% of Brazil's electricity comes from hydropower. That's huge, too. We know that it is controversial, hydropower. It's true that when you make big dams, uh, you have problems, you destroy parts of the forest, etc., etc. It's true also that Brazil built its dams uh, in the Amazon or in faraway places, and so uh, we have a, a lot of losses of energy by the big transmission lines uh, to, the, uh, to the industrial centers. But in the end, uh, it's much, much more clean and much interesting than to burn fuel to burn fossil fuels. So this is absolutely important. Brazil 
is a huge hydroelectric power and will keep doing it. Now we have this big problem in, the, in Belo Monte in, uh, in the Amazon, but I think the, the Brazilian government will keep uh, uh, this line of producing hydro uh, electricity uh, because it is cheap and clean. If we look at the other 20% of Brazil's consumption of electricity, in mu much of it comes from burning cellulose and bagasse, sugarcane bagasse. So it is quite uh, a sustainable way of producing electricity. The other big uh, uh, source of renewables is biofuels. And in this case, Brazil is a real case study for the world. Brazil developed ethanol from sugarcane, sugarcane ethanol, since the 70s, after the uh, oil shock of the 70s. And it was a very, very successful program with a lot of technology embedded in it. We had to make a lot, a lot of lot of research and development and technology to have sugarcane uh, doing its job of producing uh, ethanol. Just one example, uh, when you produce ethanol with corn, every unit of energy you put to produce uh, uh, energy with corn, you get out of corn 1.4 uh, uh, times this energy. When you do it with sugar beets, you get 1.8. When you do it with cane, you get 9. That's a huge difference. And what is interesting in the sugar cane is that it's real sustainable. Uh, let's just look at the, at the numbers. Uh, sugar plantation in Brazil as a whole, sugar cane plantation, covers 2.3% of arable land, which is 0.9% of total land in Brazil. And ethanol production covers 1% of total arable land in Brazil. And Brazil is the biggest producer of ethanol in the world. Hmm. And all these plantations are about 2,000 kilometers from the rainforest, in the state of Sao Paulo, and Paraná, or in the Northeast. So it's extreme. You don't have a competition between sugarcane and uh, agriculture, uh, food. At the same time, all the other parts of the sugar of the sugar cane is burned as energy, and sugar cane doesn't need irrigation. So we have this a kind of very interesting way uh, of producing energy uh, from the biomass. But what is important to, to, to have a look in is that we need a lot of very high-level research to arrive to that. Uh, to, to, to that competitivity. 